What's up, guys? So, one of Fortnite's most essential topics is how to make more intelligent plays. You know, in the current Fortnite meta, making smart plays is arguably more important than mechanical skill. Yep, we're talking about smart decisions and advanced strategies. Yes, the stuff that separates the pros from a sweaty guy with good aim. Uh-huh. And with Instapro, hey guys, go over and check it out, proguides.com. You can honestly be one of those pros. I'm serious. Get coached by some of the most knowledgeable players in the Fortnite scene. Today, we're going to be discussing the top three tips to make you a smarter player because that is super important to your success. We're going to go over positioning, when to play low ground, and when to play high ground, and how to effectively rotate to zone. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, Keith Allen, and we've been having some great conversations on my Instagram. If you haven't had the opportunity to follow me, make sure you do today. We got a lot going on. Okay, so just think of Ghost Bizzle. His special talent revolves around intelligent plays. While he does have the mechanical skill, okay, it's his smart plays that sets him apart above his competition. I mean, remember when the dude almost qualified for the World Cup in week nine of solos without any guns? Do you remember that? That was all smart plays, guys. No aiming involved. If you don't believe me, check this out. Thank you. Get out of zone. That actually worked somewhat. Get out of the zone. Can't break this tree, bro. Get out of the zone. Get out of the zone. Get out of the zone. I'm gonna win this game. Let's go! So that perfectly demonstrates the potential of smart plays. Most of us probably wouldn't even get 10 points without weapons. Are you serious? Come on. So now, yeah, let's get into the fun stuff. Our first topic is none other than positioning. All right, so when we talk about good positioning, the first thing that probably comes to mind is high ground. If you're one of those players struggling mechanically to get good at the game, you need to find other areas where you could just give yourself an advantage. And positioning, guys, just so happens to be one of those methods. Hey, in fact, positioning is so vital that it is usually the winning factor, even if the enemy outskills you. So by now you may know the basics of positions and how to find better angles, but trust me, this video will bring something more to you than that. One fatal mistake I see all too often is players giving up the high ground unnecessarily. So many of you guys ask me on my Instagram about this, like how do I not give up high ground? Well, listen to this. If you see the enemy on low health and you give up high ground to chase the kill, listen guys, I know it's hard to resist, I know, but sometimes it's not always about getting those eliminations. It's about staying one step ahead of the other enemies who are waiting for you to slip up. Forfeiting your position is extremely dangerous because with many other enemies lurking, risking your advantageous positioning can result in you getting pinched or even dying. So this doesn't only apply in a duo or squad game, it, it could also apply in a solo game where many enemies are nearby. Unfortunately, Arena has turned to aggressive pub matches, but in customs or tournament cups, this isn't the case. The only situation where dropping from height is effective would be in a solo match with no enemies nearby. Okay, so the ultimate goal of anybody who gets an enemy low is to prevent them from healing up, thus becoming harder to kill. So if you've ever watched high skill players, one of their main tactics is that they can simultaneously damage multiple opponents and still keep their great positioning. After knocking an enemy, they won't go for a thirst unless they have the time or desperately need the mats. And on top of that, a knocked opponent can be used as bait to get the enemy's teammate to go for the risky play of reviving his teammate. Thirsting when you need the health or when you need the materials is understandable. Okay, we I, I get that. But putting yourself in a tricky situation is simply not worth the extra kill. We have to play smart. We got to. 
Here's something a lot of players forget. Another important aspect when it comes to positioning is the assault rifle. This weapon, my friends, is much more lethal than the shotgun. That's because the AR is effective from all ranges and is ultimately the weapon that helps close the distance. Watch your favorite streamers if you don't believe me and you're gonna see how many kills the AR racks up for them. I mean, if you think about all the times you were third partied or how many kills are gained in the late game using the AR, the sheer numbers would blow the shotgun away. This isn't even saying the shotgun is ineffective, it's just actually one of the best guns in the game. But there's a definitive proof, my friends, that the AR is more viable for kills overall. The last defining aspect of positioning is third partying. This is when you get yourself in a situation, okay, and you can easily surprise two unsuspecting enemies who are focused on their 1v1. This, my friends, this is when you start getting some kills. Always look to be the third party. Whether it be in arena games or cash cups, being the third party <laughs> is the best possible circumstance that you can be in. Third partying enables you to scope out the enemies, check out their items, their mats, positioning, which in turn allows you to attack in a more informed way. You're not just attacking blindly. So listen to this guys, the best way to third party is to land on high ground and get some AR shots off. Usually, with this method, you'll be able to get both enemies very low health, which makes them an easy finish. So statistically speaking, if we look at how often the third party loses fights, it almost never happens guys. The teams that third parties of fight arise with the potential to eliminate both enemies unsuspectingly. So I cannot stress how important coming in as a third party is in almost every situation. The biggest advantage of third partying is coming in unscathed while the other enemies are shooting and spraying at each other. That's why this is one of the most lethal forms of smart plays. So let's take a look on how to rotate properly. Oftentimes rotations are what decide whether or not you make it to the end game. Many players get caught up in the three-way fights and are forced to use all their materials and utilities just to make it out alive. Now tell me this, is it worth potentially getting a kill or two just to lose all your health, mats, and utilities? I'm waiting. Smart players avoid these predicaments. Rotating is a very complex topic and requires solid, smart decisions. Let's go over a few of them here. So taking a very centralized path could, more often than not, cause a fight to break out at unpredictable times. Areas that have a high concentration of players rotating like Neil Tilted, Dusty Divot, and Salty Springs could end up with you getting blasted back to the lobby. So you want to use all available rotational methods such as drift boards, quad crashers, ballers, and slipstreams to get to the safe zone alive. Another important factor, my friends, in rotating is your landing. Its role in the grand scheme of things is tremendous. In our previous videos, we talked about the benefits and how important landing is and picking a viable spot with ample rotation. A lot of you guys ask me these questions too, so please listen to this. Players who decide to land around dusty or more towards the center of the map usually have an easier time rotating. Did you get that? Because this is super important. The further you are on the side of the map, the more difficult it gets to rotate inwards. So when rotating, you really want to take a few things into account, okay? If the storm is pushing and you see a third party opportunity, you need to think to yourself, will I be able to finish this fight in time? That's <laughs> super important. How many enemies are there? Does it look like a tough fight? All of these variables will help you decide whether to take the fight while rotating in the safe zone. So if you happen to get into a fight where the enemy pushes you aggressively, hey, most of the time you will have to fight back, right? You generally want to avoid fights near the edge of the storm because you run the highest risk of dying there. Even the best of the best avoid the three-way fights. They look to isolate enemies in a 2v2 or a 1v1 near the edges of the map. Taking fights with multiple teams are almost entirely pointless and will do more harm than good. If you can avoid these kinds of fights, then by all means, please do it. Rotating away from highly populated areas is the primary tip for rotations. The ultimate goal, my friends, is to make it to late game, right? Isn't that the goal? Isn't that why we do this? This isn't saying that you should just play passive and save, but there are times when you just need to play aggressive and times when you should be focused on rotation. Next time you're itching to take a third party, think about the rotation, guys, okay? So let's head on over to our last tip for the day. Are you guys ready? Onto our next subject, when to play low ground and when to play the high ground. In a vast majority of fights, you're gonna see players quickly contest height and get shot down and die. But why? It's because they simply decided to play high ground at a very foolish moment. Just because you got high ground, guys, doesn't automatically mean you're in an advantageous position. You know, it's all about timing and strategy, right? So sometimes you have to play low ground. Placing yourself on the low ground in the predicament where you should be playing high ground will not end up well. 
This applies regardless of how good you are. You have to know when to improvise. The primary goal of every fight should be to attain the high ground, right? The amount of vision, angles, advantages it gives up usurps low ground in almost every scenario. Late game arena matches are almost always forgiving for the high ground players while punishing those on the low ground. Although there will be situations where you can't get high ground simply because too many people are spraying at you. Or hey, maybe the enemy is a better builder. When you fight against a pro player who has height, it becomes nearly impossible to regain height. Pro players, they know all the tricks in the game and regaining height is something he won't let you do. This is where low ground tactics come into play. Most pro players will usually always, always go for high ground at the start of the fight, right? If this proves unsuccessful, many pro players resort to the low ground style of play. Often, this can even be more effective than high ground, but let's find out why. You can go for a series of low ground peak shots, confuse your enemy by jumping out of different angles, or pre-fire shots when they are about to peak from high ground. So if you've ever watched Mongo guys, you're going to notice these tactics quite often. He is always quick to incorporate chip damage into his building even from the low ground. Keep in mind that while you're playing the low ground, you should always look for opportunities to retake high ground, especially, especially if your opponent gives up the high ground guys. Like we talked about in previous videos, capitalizing on your enemy's mistakes is what you got to do. Play the low ground with the intention of retaking high ground when your opponent gives it up. The same rule applies to scrim in games and many other situations that we can just think of. I will say, <laughs> another advantage of the low ground is that it's harder to see from a distance. Usually, the third party always targets the high ground players. Now, there's a lot more complex details and strategies which you can use to win from the low ground, but this is the gist of it. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, Keith Allen. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was awesome to do this with you. Hey, follow me on my Instagram. We got a lot going on. And let us know which video you like to see next. Don't forget to stay notified by subscribing and hitting that like button. And we're going to see you guys next time.